Today we're ranking every single light mech in the Battletech Secession Wars era, and I guarantee it, we're gonna offend someone. Listed here are all the light mechs available during the late Secession Wars, and not only are we ranking how useful the original designs are to our mercenary company like ours, but also the best variants. So here's the tier list, and we're gonna go through each mech from S to F. S being the best, F being the worst. But this isn't some kind of tier list where we rate mechs based on how we feel about a mech. Oh, no, 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 no. We're doing engineering. We're using mathematics and applied science to cut straight through the biases of the last 300 years of Secession Wars so that by the end of this video, you'll know for certain what the best mech is for our mercenary company. In order to do that, we're going to develop an evaluation matrix. And to help us define the design criteria for the matrix, we're going to first go over the two mechs which define the metagame for light mechs. The first one being the Phoenix Hawk. This mech is the apex predator in the light mech food web. With its combination of speed, good armor, and a large laser that can open up many light mechs armor in a single shot, the Phoenix Hawk puts an evolutionary pressure on the mechs we're rating today. The Phoenix Hawk helps us define our first three evaluation criteria. Offense, defense, and mobility. Scout mechs must be able to either output 20 or more damage to make the Phoenix Hawk think twice about taking the fight, have 8 armor on their legs, center torso, and any location with ammunition so they don't get one shot killed by its large laser, or be able to match the Phoenix Hawk's movement of 696 in order to outrun it. The second mech which defines the meta is the ultra-efficient Locust. Aggressively costed at 1.5 million sea bills and compact enough to fit two of these mechs in a single mech bay, the Locust is very hard to beat out as a dedicated scout. While it lacks firepower, it has adequate defense to protect against the Phoenix Hawk's large laser and can outrun it in most situations. Its real strength is the utility it brings with its compact design though. Say for example you're a company sized mercenary unit and you've rented a Union dropship for a raid. That gives you 12 mech bay slots to fill with mechs. While you could commit 4 of those mech bays on a premium scout lance, it would be better to use 2 bays for a lance of locusts that can get the job done well enough and then use the other 2 bays to take 2 heavy mechs and bring additional firepower. In battalion size invasions, entire heavy or assault lances can be taken if locusts are used as the primary scout mech instead of the bulkier scout options like the Stinger or Wasp. The locust helps us define another two criteria, cost and utility. Since many mechs cannot beat the locust purely on scouting, they have to fill some other niche to justify taking up a whole mech bay. This is most often being a multi-role scout striker mech or bringing some kind of crit, piercing, or anti-infantry weapon to the lance. The last criteria is availability of the mech and its spare parts. We're looking for a chassis that makes up at least 2% of the light mech market and is ideally used by all the great houses of the inner sphere. Since some mercenary companies may have access to different supplies if they're operating in different regions for an extended period of time, we're leaving this criteria out until the end so we can just rate the mechs themselves. The remaining five criteria were rated according to importance to a for-profit enterprise like our mercenary company. With that being said, Commander, let's kick off our tier list with a few mechs that would be a terrible addition to our mercenary company. First off, the Oscout. This mech is just way too over-specialized. Fast, but it costs twice as much and takes up twice as much space to do the same job as the Locust. Can it scout better than the Locust? Yes, absolutely. Can it scout twice as well as the Locust? No. So you'd be better off buying two Locusts and covering twice as much ground as them. The Oscout comes in with a weighted score of 2.8, and so we're rating it an F. In the same vein, the Spider. Primarily deployed by the Free Worlds League and costing 3 million sea bills, it has a little bit more firepower with its two medium lasers. Its critical flaw is that it has six armor on the legs, which means it risks getting one shot by the Phoenix Hawk's large laser. Do we want to risk losing 3 million sea bills, that is, nearly half the price of a heavy mech in a single shot? No. We also rate it an F. And while we're here in the dumpster, we may as well just get the big stinker out of the way, the Free Worlds League experimental 15-ton mech, the Flea 14. This one's even worse than the Spider and the Oscout. The mech's leg is completely destroyed by even a medium laser, which means our 1.3 million Siebel investment will be face planting faster than my grandma can say life alert. We rate the Flea an F. Alright, so with the flat bad mechs out of the way, let's take a look at the mechs in the Scout Striker category. These mechs compete with the Locust by having high offensive stats so that they can contribute to a fight while still being able to scout. This makes them multi-purpose and justifies them taking up a whole mech base slot by making them sort of a two-for-one deal. Let's get a good baseline going and take a look at the Javelin, a mech found in every region of space but primarily used by the Federated Suns. This guy's got what we want. Good availability, good offensive striking power, and moves with the Phoenix Hawk at 696. 
It comes with two SRM6s, which adds a critical hit weapon to the lance. Only issue is the armor is a bit thin, but overall this mech is passable, coming in at a respectable score of 5.4, which earns it a B+. Its variant, the Javelin 10F, also known as the Fire Javelin, is even better in my opinion. It swaps the SRMs for four medium lasers, which improves the mech's defense at the cost of critical hit potential. The mech comes in at an A-. On the opposite end of things, the Lyran Commonwealth's Commando misses the mark. Hard hitting at 18.3 damage with three weapon systems for redundancy and reliability, but not quite fast enough to outrun the Phoenix Hawk and can get one shot by its large laser. It's cheaper than the Javelin at 1.9 million C bills, but paying for something that can get one shot is a mistake in my opinion. It's clearly inferior to the Javelin and rates out at a C+. Rounding out the Scout Striker group is the 35-ton Draconis Combine Jenner. This mech has tremendous firepower that rivals many mediums, and it's able to perform an arm flip maneuver to shoot behind it. It's very expensive though, and with 6 armor on the legs, it can still be one shot. While it's very good in single engagements, or for house units where price is not an issue, for a long-term mercenary campaign, the Jenner D will likely draw too many repair costs, and so it sits at a B+. Its variant, the Jenner F, which swaps the heavy SRM4 for extra armor, has everything we need though. And I'm not just saying that because I used to be a Jenner pilot for the Combine. It's a solid mech that only gets dinged for a high cost. Re-rate it at an A+. Now that we've rated these first few mechs, Commander, we're able to paint a good picture of what we're looking for in the ideal light mech. Generally speaking, mechs in this class need to meet two criteria. They need to be able to stand up to the Phoenix Hawk in some way, and must be able to outcompete the Locust by either being a more efficient scout, or bring something else to the table to justify their use of an additional mech bay. In this way, it's easy to see why the popular Stinger and Wasp mechs shouldn't be selected. Both are dedicated scouting and spotter mechs that bring no additional utility to the table, and that puts them in direct competition with the Locust. They both take up a whole mech bay, where the Locust takes up only half of one, which makes them inferior logistically. They're both also flawed defensively, with less than 8 armor on their key locations. While they do have 696 movement, which is what we're looking for in speed, the Locust's 812 movement can keep up or win over most terrain types. While a case can be made for the critical hit power of the Kelhound's Wasp 1W variant, overall I would recommend avoiding purchasing these mechs and instead selecting the Locust if we ever did want a pure scout mech. With that out of the way, let's move on to the next category, the unusual mechs. All of these mechs have some kind of unique weapon or quirk that sets them apart from the rest. And this usually results in having an interesting fighting style, or bringing added utility to the lance. By the way, Commander, if you'd like to add me to your mercenary company's advisory staff, all you have to do to hire me is click the subscribe and bell icon on the video below. First up, the Federated Sun's Valkyrie. Its unique weapon is a long-range LRM-10, which it uses to kite and outrange its opponents. This mech has outstanding armor, decent mobility, and for a moderate cost. Its unique weapon makes it tactically challenging to pilot, but an ideal mech for future leaders to learn about range brackets and how to maximize damage. Re-rank it, overall, a B. The Raven. One of the first new mechs to be produced in centuries, the Compellin Confederation's prototype Raven 1X is still at its experimental stages. The mech was first spotted a year ago in 3024, so reports are still a bit sketchy, but from what I hear, the advanced electronic warfare suite does not live up to expectations. This mech is slow, expensive, and has armor issues. I'd expect the design to die out in the next few decades. Its specialized equipment it runs is just too heavy. The Experimental Raven scores a 3.1, or a C- on our tier list. The Firestarter. Now here's a mech we're going to need in our mercenary companies for sure. It's a dedicated anti-infantry mech to deal with the many militia or combined arms units we go up against. This mech one-shots entire infantry platoons at 1-2 to two hexes. The downside is that it's light on its damage against other mechs and greedy during the initiative because it needs to get close to its targets. It comes out to a weighted score of 5.0, which is a B. Oddly enough, the originally produced A variant is the best choice here. The mech has better survivability and better anti-battle mech capabilities. It still retains the ability to one-shot infantry platoons as long as it closes to one hex. While it's been out of production for the last 300 years, our technicians still have the schematics to perform a refit back to the original design. The Firestarter A scores a 6.0 and rates out to an A. The Urban Mech While it's an A-tier mech to the Great Houses because of its ability to deter attacks on strategic assets, it's too over-specialized as an urban warfare mech to be of use to a mercenary company like ours. Its slow 232 speed makes it incapable of keeping up with many missions our mercenary contracts will ask us to perform. If we end up buying one, it'll often sit in our mech bays unused. It rates out 
to an F. The Compelling Confederation R60L variant is the variant we would want to see if we end up getting command rights to a house garrison unit, but it's still not worth buying. It also scores an F. Last of this group, the Draconis Combine's Panther is perhaps the most interesting mech of the bunch. While it's not fast enough to scout itself, the mech comes with a PPC and SRM-4, which gives it both a piercing weapon to punch through armor and a critical hit weapon to exploit the hole. The mech can be used as a fire support mech to cover friendly light lances, used to block or hunt down enemy light lances, or fight as a trooper mech in larger battles, as long as it plays a bit more cautious. Its PPC will often open up lights in a single shot and force them to make an early decision to disengage or risk destruction. We rate this mech an A. On to the rare design category, or those that make up around 1% of mechs on the market or less. In most of these designs, we'll recognize issues that we've already seen, but there is one gem of a mech at the end I'd like to talk about. First is the Falcon. Good mobility, good armor, but has rear machine guns that waste tonnage. It's not bad overall, but it suffers from a similar issue as most dedicated scouts in that it's an inferior mech to the ultra-efficient Locust. It rates to a C. Next up, the Hermes. Another scout with tremendous speed but flawed armor. It loses to the Locust. F. The Hermes 1B variant does a little better with three medium lasers, but it still has the armor issue. And that brings a score up to a 3.2 or a C. The Hornet. A second line unit for the Federated Suns, its LRM-5 will struggle to make a difference in a fight even if it does kite. It has armor issues and a slower speed than what we need. C-. The 152 variant is also not recommended because of the armor issues and inferior scouting, even if it has more damage with an SRM-4. C-. The Mongoose. Now this is a mech that ticks nearly all the boxes. Solid damage output, outstanding armor, and superior mobility. And it comes with the command mech quirk, which means that instead of relying on the 45-ton Phoenix Hawk to give its lance the command mech initiative bonus, we can get it on a well-designed 25-ton mech. And that opens up opportunities for different lance compositions we don't normally get to use. It rates out to an S. Its cousin, the Mongoose 68, is rated a bit lower because of single large laser, which makes it inconsistent on the damage side, but its other high stats still bring it up to an S tier mech. So that's the tier list for the light mechs of 3025. But what happens to this list when we take the realities of the resource strapped secession wars into account? Which of these mechs should form the core of our mercenary companies? And to answer that question, we need to consider availability. Shown here are the actual weighted scores of each design. Analysis shows a pretty big drop in performance if we use anything rated lower than a B, so I would avoid those mechs completely. The remaining mechs should in theory be usable if we happen to salvage or run across them, but the Panther and Jenner are too closely guarded by the Draconis Combine for us to realistically acquire. And if we want to avoid potential supply shortages, we should avoid the Mongoose and the Valkyrie as they are a bit too rare for us to reliably find parts for. That leaves us with the Firestarter, Javelin, and Locust. Designs with high scores and universal availability. These are the three mechs that I would recommend starting to collect, with the Javelin and Firestarter forming the core of our Light Lances and the Locust playing a more supportive role. If you are open to Modifications Commander, we can get additional efficiency by modifying the Javelin to a variant shared by one of our viewers, Matthew Merrick. We're designating the experimental variant he shared with us in the comments, JVN MERCX2, and calling it Dent. This change increases the survivability of the Javelin and combines the critical hit weapon of the 10N with the efficiency of the 10F. The change also adds redundancy and standardization to our scout lances. Instead of the lance losing its critical hit weapon if the 10N of the group is destroyed, the SRM-6 is now spread across all Javelins, making the lance resilient to losses. The variant scores high to moderately high in all criteria, and is multi-use, able to scout and contribute to a fight all while remaining relatively well armored. It scores a 6.6 .6 on our rating scale, and it ends up as an A-tier mech. If you would like to take a deeper dive on how to pilot some of the higher tier mechs we covered, please see our mercenary guides on this channel. Thank you for listening, and please subscribe for more.